In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the AB Calculus exam from 2012, specifically free response question number five. In this question, the topics that are being assessed are when should one examine area under a curve versus height of a curve or the slope of a curve? When are you looking at the antiderivative, the function itself, or its derivative? How do you find critical points, maxes, mids, and inflections? So the function that we're given here is g prime. So if we calculate the area under that graph, that will lead us to a change in height of the g function, the, which is the antiderivative. If we go the other direction, so we look at the slopes of this particular graph, then that will give us the values of the heights of g double prime, which is g's second derivative. For this particular question, what they are looking for in part a is for you to find g of 3 and g of negative 2. So first let me represent the area from 0 to 3 under our g prime graph here, which is highlighted in pink, as you can see. And then looking at it more closely, we're given a semicircle and a triangle. And so I want one quarter of the area of a circle. So one fourth times pi times two squared. And then we've got the area of that portion of the triangle, which is one half its base, which is one, and its height, which is three. So in other words, the pink quarter of a circle is a value of pi in the area representing that pink triangle is three halves. So to calculate my value for g of three, I need to know where we start at for the g graph. So g of zero is five, therefore g of three is g of zero plus the change in height of the g graph from zero to three. In other words, where I start, which is a height of five, and then the area that's accumulated under this graph from 0 to 3, representing the change in height of the g function. Now the next part wants to figure out g of negative 2, so I need to know the area between 0 and negative 2 for this graph. So g of negative 2 is g of 0 plus the integral from 0 to negative 2 of g prime of x dx. Now, g of 0 is 5 once again, and the area that's shaded in pink is a value of pi as we saw before. If I was going from left to right, it would be an increase in height of pi, but, but since I'm going in the opposite direction, the integral from 0 to negative 2 is the same as the opposite of the integral from negative 2 to 0 of g prime of x dx. So in other words, my value of that integral is going to be pi, so I've got 5 plus a minus pi being the height of negative 2. Now in part b, we're looking for the x values for which g has inflection points. So, G will have inflection points when it changes concavity. This occurs when the slopes of G change from increasing to decreasing or vice versa. In other words, this means that the heights of the graph that were given, which correlates to G prime, when those heights change from increasing to decreasing or vice versa. So here we see G prime of X is increasing, and then at X equals zero, G prime of X turns to decreasing. Therefore, my original function g had to have an inflection point at x equals 0. The same is true at x equals 1. g prime of x, this graph here, as highlighted in orange, goes from decreasing to increasing. And so there was an inflection point on the g graph at 2, as well as going from increasing to decreasing here in yellow to orange. At x equals 3, my original function g had an inflection point there. So in part c, <clears throat> they give you that h of x is defined as g of x minus 1 half x squared. So 
the first piece is that we're looking for information about critical points. And critical points for the function h will occur when either h prime of x is equal to 0 or is undefined. So let's go ahead and find h prime. So h prime of x is equal to g prime of x minus the derivative of 1 half x squared, which is x. So we're going to be focusing on where h prime of x is equal to 0. So therefore, set g prime of x minus x equal to 0. And that will occur when g prime of x is equal to x. So the graph that you were given in this problem is of g prime. I'm going to graph the line y equals x. And the two places where my picture here intersects y equals x will be our two critical points. So let's go ahead and figure out using the equation of this semicircle, which is the square root of 4 minus x squared. Okay. And I'm going to set that equal to x. And I'm going to figure out for what x values this will be true. So square both sides. Add x squared to both sides. So I get 4 equals 2x squared. Divide both sides by 2. So, and then take the square root. So x equals plus or minus the square root of 2. However, we can get rid of a minus square root of 2 because we only have the top portion of the semicircle here. All right, so looking back up at our graph here, we can see that our two critical points are at x equals square root of 2 and at x equals 3. Now, it's very important to be able to check our critical points to talk about whether or not those critical points is points will be maximums or minimums or neither. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw a number line here and it's going to represent h prime of x in terms of the sign. I know where h prime of x is. Uh, I've got some boundary points so I'm going to have 0, square root of 2, and my other critical point which is 3. And I'm going to test the sign of h prime. So h prime is the difference between g prime and x. And so when g prime is above x, that difference is positive. So in other words, the semicircle was above the red line between 0 and root 2, so that was a positive difference. The semicircle, your black graph, was below the red line between root 2 and 3, and was also below the red line between 3 and, uh, between and after 3. So therefore, because of the fact that h prime went from positive to negative, my h function was increasing than decreasing, so x equals root 2 is a max, and in x equals 3, my h prime of graph went from negative to negative, which meant the slope of my h graph was negative, and then it went to negative again, which means that it was neither a maximum nor a minimum, because you have to have a change in the sign for it to be a max 